Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for coming back to the podcast. Today's special guest is Scott Cruz, who is the president of the KHCB Radio Network here in Houston. Scott, good to have you on. Thanks, Richard. Good to be with you. Yes. Uh, not too long ago, I interviewed uh, the outgoing president, now President Emeritus, uh, Bruce Munsterman, who's been at the station for quite a while. And I, mm -hmm. he filled me in on some of his past and uh, experiences there at the radio station. And mm -hmm. of course, uh, tell me about the new incoming president. Of course, I say new. It's been, I think, about six months now since you've right. uh, taken over the helm there. And so I wanted to have you come on and you know, tell people who may be tuning into the station for the first time or maybe people who've been there uh, you know, for, for some time now. Who's the new president? Who's the new the new guy in charge, so to speak? So kind of kick yeah. us off there. Start us off with your experience in radio. Yeah. Well, let me let me just begin by expressing thanks and gratitude to Bruce Munsterman. Um, he is the real deal. Uh, and folks have enjoyed him on the air and maybe have had a chance to to meet him through the years, but he is a servant of the Lord, uh, such a great heart for ministry. He has done an amazing job of growing KHCB through the years. Uh, I think about the expansion of the network. When he first came here, we were just one station. And uh, he was really the person that ignited a lot of expansion for the ministry, uh, taking us to places like Del Rio and Lubbock and Palm Coast, Florida. And so he's really done an amazing work. He's assembled a great team and I'm really blessed and honored to, to follow him. I, I knew Bruce for many years through the national religious broadcasters. And from time to time we would be in meetings together. And so ne never dreaming of course, that I would uh, follow him here in Houston, but he's a, uh, he's been a blessing to work with. He's uh, the most gracious man that you would you would ever think to meet and and know, and um, so real privilege to to follow him. So let me just let me just start there, and we could probably end there too, since I'm so new. But um, but I'll at least start there. Uh, as you mentioned, I've been here just a few months, and um, really still kind of wrapping my head around all that um, uh, KHCB entails. Uh, the various duties of each team member, understanding our different locations where we have stations. I'm very new to Texas geography. Uh, I'm from Chicago. I'm from the Midwest. I had a stint in Cleveland. And so if you don't have a major sports franchise, I'm probably not familiar with your city down here. So I, uh, I am uh, taking a hard crash course in Texas geography and learning some of these areas. I went to Louisiana for the first time just a, a, a few weeks ago. I had never been in the state of Louisiana. So I'm really getting familiar with the area. The people have been fantastic. Uh, but I come from Christian radio background, 36 years really in, in Christian radio, did a, uh, a short stint in country radio in Chicago many, many years ago. But uh, the majority of my ministry career has been with Moody radio stations, Moody Bible Institute in Chicago and uh, various affiliates and network positions. And I just have a heart for um, God using Christian radio in the lives of uh, believers. And uh, we know that some come to Christ through Christian radio, but many more are discipled through Christian radio. That's how they they grow in their knowledge of the word and the Christian life. And uh, so I love legacy heritage Christian radio. Uh, I've had the opportunity to work for some older radio stations, some stations that have been around for decades and decades. And KHCB falls into that category with over six decades of ministry. So it's just really a good fit for me personally. Okay. Now, now going back even further, maybe even mm -hmm. into your youth, uh, was there something, was there some sort of seminal moment where radio sparked an interest or is it something you happened into maybe a, a career detour or how did you get into the business to begin with? Right. Well, it's not a very spiritual story, but, um, you know, I wanted to play major league baseball and I, I thought if you couldn't play major league baseball for a living, the second best job would be to be a major league baseball broadcaster. And so, you know, all throughout school, they, they want you to focus in on, on things that um, you can take courses in and have a, a field of study. And so speech and broadcasting kind of became my backup plan 
for if things didn't work out in in baseball for me well of course um uh, that ended up being the the path that i started to to go down as a kid I, you know i i would be in bed at night and i would have the the radio under my pillow and i'm listening to radio stations across the country kdka in pittsburgh and 3we in cleveland primarily listening to to baseball broadcasts at night and that's really what fostered my love for for radio um at the same time my father would be out in the garage listening to the christian talk and teaching station all day and listening to warren wearsby and oh, yeah. uh, chuck swindoll and uh, Ray Ortland and all of the the great teachers, and he was discipled on Christian radio. So it wasn't uh, until uh, my early twenties, though, that it all kind of converged, and the Lord began to to take some of those loves and passions and bring them together for the sake of of His glory in in Christian radio ministry. Okay, and so talking about um, for God's glory, and it sounds like you know spirituality, your uh, religion was something that was pretty prominent in your household. Talk about uh, sort of your journey through you in your faith. Yeah, well, again, I I credit my parents and and their example in that um, my dad is a Vietnam veteran. He came back from the war, uh, married my my mom, and. Um, shortly after they were married, my grandfather passed away, and it was kind of a uh, a shocking um, occurrence, and um, uh, really led them in their faith to to ask, uh, you know, what is what is after uh, life here on earth? And um, uh, God drew them to a local church, and they uh, came to know Christ as their Savior, dedicated their lives to the Lord. And we were in church every time the doors open. And it was, I was very young, but it was that transformation that I saw in my parents as a, as a kid that really uh, drew me to Christ. And, and I saw uh, the passion and love that my parents had for the Lord and uh, was surrounded by wonderful people in, in a great church environment. And um, God really used that to disciple and, and grow me. And um, so it was those things that eventually led me to to Christ. My my mom uh, was the person that expressed the plan of salvation to me, and I prayed with her at the age of ten, and then eventually ended up at the Moody Bible Institute, and then in Christian radio. Okay, so your your first gig on the radio. Do you remember what what that experience was like for you, and how did you land it? Because everyone has. Um, it's seemingly a pretty unique story with radio. Everyone I've ever talked to that's gotten in that business, no one has the same two stories, you know? Yeah, right, right. I was doing some narration work at our church. Uh, I think it was a cantata or something. And there was a parachurch director of a ministry who was in the uh, congregation that particular Sunday. And he had a little show on a Christian station in our in our hometown and he knew that they were looking for somebody, and he had heard me do this um, this narration work. And so he gave my name to the station manager, and the station manager called me. And um, knowing that I had always had an interest in radio, but really didn't know how to to get started in it, that was my that was my connection. So they invited me to to come and um, just kind of um, get a feel for the radio station for a few days. And they didn't tell me that I couldn't come back. So I just kept coming every day. And uh, they gave me a part-time job. And that eventually became a music director, sports director position. And um, the rest is history, so to speak. Okay. And what, what station was that? Do you remember the call letters and frequency? Yes. Yeah. WPEO uh, AM uh, 1020. Okay. Is that right? AM 1020 Peoria. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, now, it seems like there's there's a fair amount of, um, I guess, I hate, and I don't want to use the word reputable, they're all reputable, but really kind of prominent radio stations that come out of, the, out of Chicago, Illinois, mm -hmm. whether it's secular or religious. Right, um, right. I know programming just outside the radio station, like you've got the Unshackled programs that, that I know play on KHCB here. And that's been yeah. going on for a long time and a very well-established program. Uh, yeah. Are there? Do you know, Scott, if there are other programs such as that around 
the rest of the country or is it just is unshackled kind of the, the big prominent one well unshackled is certainly a leader in in dramatic uh, production in chicago it does have a, a super rich history in in broadcasting in general i mean you think of wgn and wls and wbbm and you know the list goes on and on but uh moody was a pioneer in in christian radio uh, they're coming up on a uh, hundred years of okay. Christian radio ministry. They were established in 1926. And, um, I remember at one point going through the archives at, uh, WMBI and there were speeches that they would give in the late twenties on the platform of radio, because, um, at the time it was this new technology and a lot of believers were a little reluctant and hesitant to accept it. And, you know, the prince of the power of the air. And so people at Moody would actually give a um, a speech or a, a presentation at a local church saying that, hey, we can use this for, for God's glory. And they had a variety of, of programming. Most of it was live back in, in the uh, uh, 20s and 30s. And in the 1950s, they really hit their stride with dramatic programming. Uh, much like uh, Unshackled still produces today. But if you're familiar with uh, Ranger Bill and Stories of Great Christians and Sailor Sam, uh, Bookshelf, all of those dramatic presentations that were uh, created and assembled by Moody Radio um, back in the, the 1950s and 60s, uh, especially, uh, they were they were a huge part of that. You know, there's something about listening to those radio dramas, uh, whether it's programs like Unshackled or you go to the secular side and it's like um, there's some when I used to work in the mechanic industry and third shift, someone would pull up these, uh, the, you know, radio dramas on on the radio. They still broadcast them at two and right. three in the morning. You know, right. I can't remember all the names of them, but there's something about hearing a story through the radio as opposed yeah. to watching it on TV. Yes. Yeah. No, there is a, a draw for for storytelling for sure, and I, you know, I I hear from a lot of listeners in their sixties plus who enjoy children's programming, and I don't know so much that it's children's programming as much as it is storytelling. They are attracted to the arc of the story, and of course, it's Christ centered and um, inspirational in that sense. But there there is a draw there, and it's. It's great in that you've heard that term theater of the mind and radio really does help to create that for you, much like reading a book where you have to picture what that character looks like and um, you have the the sound to give you clues, but uh, you piece all the rest of that together. Sure. Right. So speaking of programming, what drew you down to Houston, Scott? How'd you get involved well, with KCB? Yeah, legacy legacy radio, and as um, I was I was talking with the board, and um, I, I really uh, when I was interviewing for the position, I was uh, more in a, a consultant kind of mindset as far as you know, this is what what you have, and and this is what you've done, and this is what you could do based on on my experience and understanding, and um, but it's that it's that legacy radio impact i i know what a difference it makes to have a station like this in a community um cleveland is a pretty good example for me personally in that um uh, cleveland i think is um uh, wcrf about 68 years old and i saw the impact of that radio station in that community where people would listen to the radio they would uh, uh, be discipled. They would go off to Bible college. They would come back. They would become pastors. Uh, they would listen to the radio. They'd become disciples of Christ and they would teach Sunday school or they would lead parachurch organizations. And you see that cumulative effect of God using a Christian radio station for decades and decades and the connections that they have to churches and the various pastors that are on the air. And it really makes a difference. And so I was really drawn to a station that had been around for a very long time, had had that kind of investment in a in a large uh, city like uh, Houston and beyond, and just the ability to 
navigate that and and usher them into another generation of radio listeners because that's that's really delicate. You don't want to do things to alienate the people that have listened for so long, and yet you do want um, a new generation to to listen to you as well. So, um, the the idea of a strategy or direction behind all of that is is really uh, invigorating for me personally. Mm-hmm. And have you have you figured out the magic uh, equation of getting that younger generation? You said younger generation yeah. to listen to radio, you know, particularly yeah. Christian radio. Yeah, well, I I think that um, I think you begin with the uh, idea of being channel agnostic, and that is, you know, at the end of the day, we are audio creators, and so uh, whether it's terrestrial radio or it's through your your phone that you listen or it's a podcast or, or a stream that you're you're um, you're tapping into whatever that audio content is you can distribute that on on various channels and so um, could be storytelling it could be a bible study it could be music uh, finding those things that target that age demographic and then uh the channel that they are most comfortable with, most native to, um, being in that location to to minister to them. Um, you know, radio targets a, a certain audience, but um, uh, there are there are numbers that uh, are encouraging as far as younger people who are discovering uh, radio primarily through their phones, not necessarily through a you know a, a dial somewhere, but um, but yeah, uh, being in those places where they are native to and creating audio content, that's that's kind of how you nurture and develop a, another listening audience. Okay. So what what might we see from KHCB in the future? I know, like I say, you're still relatively new to the position. And I know it's not a matter of coming in and just changing everything that already works, yeah. but it's maybe enhancing that and adding adding some things to it. Yeah. Anything that you can reveal that might, we might see in the next coming years? Yeah, no, absolutely. I'm excited about so much. There's um, there's great opportunity here for us. One, I really want to engage the city of Houston. Um, we are we're putting some things in motion that will have us a little more active in the community. We want to be a radio station, but we also want to be a ministry to uh, Houston hands and feet beyond just the the audio that we produce and the companionship that we provide uh, through disciple making content and so we really want to engage the city uh, we want to do that for sure um, we'll we'll do some some things as far as just freshening up our sound uh, I don't want to change the uh, the recipe necessarily that's made the radio station uh, so successful but I do want to sharpen some things and clean up some things and add a few new voices. And so we'll do that gradually over time. Uh, We will continue to develop Uplifted, our digital stream and channels where we've got some podcasts that are available. We've got a 24-hour stream with more contemporary music and some younger teachers and preachers. And so we'll continue to to develop that and welcome in a, a younger audience want to refresh the facility here a little bit at some point too so all kinds of all kinds of plans (laughs) okay now behind you i see 1400 a.m uh yes radio amistad so you don't have just english programming you've got spanish programming and had that for some time talk about that yeah Yeah, the spanish ministry is uh, is growing very rapidly we're super excited about that god's been using it for for many years and there's Great opportunities to expand. There are uh, outlets around the country that are looking for Spanish programming, and uh, we've had a couple of opportunities to provide that content for them. We certainly want to grow in our impact here in Houston. In fact, uh, we just found out that there's a significant uh, conference of uh, uh, Hispanic broadcasters, Christian broadcasters, that's going to take place in Houston in June. Oh. And uh, that we'll we'll have a part in assembling some of that programming for that that gathering. But yeah, no, there's great opportunities with Spanish language ministry, and we're super excited to to grow that here too. Okay, now how many stations does KHCB have across the South now? There's 61 outlets right now. 61 oh. are our count. Yes, Lake and- Charles being the the most recent. Lake Charles, Louisiana. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
Okay. And how would that compare, Scott, with uh, maybe the size of other Christian-based radio networks in the country? Do you know like kind of how that compares rank-wise? Yeah, I, I don't know exactly, you know, where we would fall in the rank. We would certainly be one of the largest. Of course, uh, Salem is very large, K-Love, uh, Moody Radio, the Bible Broadcasting Network, uh, Bot Radio, uh, Hope Media has a number of outlets as well. But we would be one of the larger networks. That's what I was thinking. Um and so it being that it's a nonprofit based station, you need volunteers, you need people to come in and help. Talk about mm -hmm. opportunities for people who may be interested in getting involved in radio, maybe not necessarily professionally, but they're just, they're just attracted to it. And they want to be involved in some way. Right, right. Well, we've had various opportunities at different times, depending on, you know, the, um, uh, uh, the nature of uh, the, the need and availability of, of people. Honestly, the most popular volunteer opportunity that we have here is Envelope Stuffing Day. We do okay. that. I think it's the fourth Tuesday of every month, pretty consistently, that uh, we welcome in volunteers and they put together our newsletter for the mailing. Um, and that welcomes all sorts of folks who make the trip to uh, our studios and, and help to put that together. We do have a few volunteers on air. I don't think that turnover is uh, is uh, is very high. I think that folks kind of come in and kind of find their spot and uh, and solidify that. But uh, there are some some volunteer opportunities on air that have been here through the years. Mm -hmm. Okay. Speaking of radio in general, how, you know, I come from a print reporter background and i mean we know that industry is really taking a hit because of the internet yeah. and yeah. you see you could find regular postings of, of reporter positions of photographer positions those are very few and far between now how oh. has the radio industry been affected by uh more internet-based technologies and, and stuff like that yeah well i i think i think one of the big differences is um you know you don't have to be at the radio station or in a radio station to be creating audio content. I mean, uh, what podcasting did was kind of remove the curtain and and understand that anybody who has great content and a microphone uh, can record that that audio and then see if there's an audience for it. So um, the flexibility, the agility that is now available for us in in this um, uh, technological age where you can create a podcast from your home or, you know, I have a at home studio and so I can actually record a little segment that I do on a daily basis from uh, my home desk. It's not necessarily a studio, but I have a really good microphone and I can record my, my segments from, from there. And, um, it, and also the flexibility of, you know, not being in the market necessarily that you're talking to. Um, I remember, a lady that we had in Chicago who would do her Chicago shift and then she would record tracks for Nashville and then she would record tracks for Cleveland as well. And um, she could do all of that from, from a studio in, in Chicago. So just that flexibility, that agility and um, uh, how that crosses all kinds of uh, things that used to be hurdles and challenges for us. Okay. Scott, what's kept you in the radio industry for 30 some odd years now? Good question. Uh, I think it is, um, I think it is the connection with people, um, that unique connection that radio has. Uh, it is so incredibly personal. Um, I, I never cease to be amazed by um, some of the letters and feedback that we receive from, from listeners. In fact, I was sharing with uh, Bruce this morning, we had received a letter from a prisoner um, who was in Louisiana, who was listening to us and um, sharing some, some of his personal testimony. But at the end of the day, it is one person talking to one person. And just as I was a, a boy with that radio under my pillow and those announcers were talking to me, um, we still have the ability to communicate and provide companionship with people uh, through radio. And I, I, there's something about that for me that's just always been uh, very appealing and and um, and worthy of, uh, of giving my life, my life to something that uh, I feel is a, a great investment for the kingdom. And I noticed that KHCB, though, 
the stations would be along the, the south part of America. There, There's programming that I listen to on the radio, uh, radio station, which I do listen to quite often, that has a global perspective that may come from other parts or may be sent to other parts. I think it's the Near East Broadcasting Network. Is that correct? Yeah, right. The you far, have their far programs east. on. Yeah. Uh -huh. Far East. Far yes. East. Yes. Yes. Yeah, no, there is that uh, ability to to cross borders. In fact, you know, you had mentioned the Spanish programming. Uh, some of the strongest response that we see to Radio Amistad is outside of Houston in Latin America. There are places in Mexico in which um, they don't have as many options to them locally as far as terrestrial radio. And so they, they find Radio Amistad or download the app and we get great response. So yeah, the, the, the international or the global ministry is, um, is expanding rapidly. And the fact that you can listen to almost any radio station anywhere in the world at any time is, is an amazing feature. You talked about different content and the ability for people to create content in a way they couldn't have done 15 or 20 years ago. Does the station uh, accept any submissions for possible programming or new features and new ideas? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, we're always reviewing those. Um, uh, I, I can't say that um, there's a lot of turnover right now with with programming, but we always, uh, you know, are reviewing um, new teaching programs, of course, new music. Bonnie Bament is our music director. And so uh, she's always pre previewing music and, and reviewing those opportunities as well. So, yes, always taking a look at that. Advice for upcoming broadcasters or maybe seasoned broadcasters who just feel maybe they're in a slump. What would you tell them, Scott? Uh, read and talk. <laughs> uh, and, so and simple. Maybe, <laughs> yes, and maybe even read out loud. But I... I think um, there is something to uh, reading and absorbing um, written content uh, that um, kind of expands your mind, your vocabulary, uh, helps you to process in that that way. And then being able to to speak or communicate, translate something that you've known or read and uh, being able to kind of regurgitate that in a way that's attractive to other people, storytelling, those types of things. Those are just great muscles to, to build. Mm -hmm. Okay. And in, in conclusion, if people want to support the station, whether they have a, a business, I know it's not a for-profit station where they buy ads, but I know they can sponsor, I think segments and stuff like that. Or if people want to donate, whether it's mm -hmm. their time or funds, and you got to keep the radio station going, uh, what's yeah. the best I guess the best avenue for them to find out that kind of information. Yeah. KHCB.org is our website and all of our information is available there. Uh, we are nonprofit. We are listener supported. It is the faithful support of uh, people who listen to the radio station that helps to keep us on the air. So uh, KHCB.org is where you'll, you'll find all of that detail. Well, very good, Scott. Well, I appreciate you coming on and sharing your experiences and also telling people about the uh, KHCB and 105.7 here locally uh, and 1400 AM for this. this yes, Spanish, that's uh, right. Out there. Yep. So thanks for coming on and I wish you all the best in your, your new position. Thanks, Richard. I appreciate it. Thanks for the time.